This is Lawrence O'Donnell of MSNBC giving us insight as to why Fannie Willis did not appear on day two for cross-examination and also why the case against her by the prosecuting attorneys was not viable by the next witness. In fact, Mr. Barnes' testimony refutes what prosecutors were insinuating. The inference was Fannie Lewis hired Nathan Wade and was throwing money his way. Let's listen to what Lawrence O'Donnell had to say before Mr. Barnes' testimony. The second day of the hearing in Fulton County, Georgia, about the Trump co-defendant's motion to disqualify District Attorney Fannie Willis from the case began as Andrew Weissman predicted it would begin. Because Fannie Willis' lawyer decided not to ask her any more questions, that meant that the Trump team of lawyers did not get another chance to ask questions of Fonnie Willis, and so she gave no more testimony today. Andrew Weissman predicted that would happen because it appeared from the Fonnie Willis side of the case yesterday that she had established everything she needed to establish in that testimony yesterday, and there was no reason to continue it. Then Fonnie Willis's lawyer called two witnesses in support of her testimony. The first witness was the former governor of Georgia, Roy Barnes, who was a highly experienced, is a highly experienced trial lawyer. He impressed everyone in the courtroom on both sides. He testified that Fawny Willis offered him the job of special prosecutor in charge of the case against Donald Trump and his co-defendants. His testimony refuted the Trump team lawyer's claim that Fawny Willis hired her boyfriend, Nathan Wade, for the job of special prosecutor so that she could then go on vacation trips with Nathan Wade and profit from his spending on her through the paycheck that she was giving him. That is the Trump team lawyer's theory of the case. Now that the testimony in the hearing is over, we can say that there was absolutely no evidence presented at all that Fawny Willis intended to profit from Nathan Wade's position or that she incidentally profited from that position in any way. Zero evidence for the fundamental reason that this hearing was held. Fawny Willis and Nathan Wade both testified that their romantic relationship began after Nathan Wade began working in the district attorney's office. Here was former Governor Barnes' testimony about why he didn't want the job of special prosecutor that eventually went to Nathan Wade. He didn't want to be the special prosecutor of the man who tried to overturn the presidential election in Georgia and sent a violent mob to attack the Capitol on January 6th. This is the swearing end of attorney Roy Barnes. Before his testimony, Roy Eugene Barnes, R O Y E U G E N E Barnes B A R N E S. Good, uh, good morning, Mr. Barnes. Can you tell the court um, a little bit about uh, your background as it relates to um, your service uh, in, the, in public service? Uh, I was uh, first elected to the state senate in 1974 from Cobb County, and I served 16 years there. And then in 1990, I ran for governor and was defeated. And two years later, I went back to the House of Representatives. I was elected to the House of Representatives and served six years until I was elected governor in 1998, and I served in that position until January of 2003. And um, after serving uh, in uh, the position uh, of governor, can you tell the uh, court a little bit about uh, what you transitioned into um, after your public service? I, I did uh, exactly what I was doing before uh, I was elected. I went back to practicing law in Marietta, Georgia with my daughter, who's now judge of the state court, and my son-in-law. And now we have... Uh, I think six or seven lawyers. Charlie Bailey back there was one of them at one time. Okay. And um, Governor Barnes, would you consider yourself a, a, to be a trial lawyer? Yes. That's, okay. We don't write contracts or we don't write wills. All we do is try cases. And I want to direct your attention uh, back to uh, 2021, um, where you were approached um, by uh, the district attorney of Fulton County, uh, Bonnie Willis. Um, about being a special prosecutor, I was. Uh, I don't do. I don't recall the exact date, but uh, I know it was sometime uh, in 2021. And uh, she asked me to come down, and uh, I met with her and Nathan Wade, and there were several other 
meeting. Uh, she asked me, uh, so they were beginning this investigation, and she asked me if I'd be interested in being special prosecutor, to which I replied that I had mouths to feed at a law office and uh, that I could not, I would not do that. And also, I just had a bad, well, I'll say bad because it happens from time to time, but I just had the FBI to report uh, a fellow uh, militia trainer to me that said they were concerned uh, that he was making threats against me. And because I was, I thought it was because of the flag, but I asked him and he said, no, it was because I was too close to the Jews, quote unquote. And uh, I told uh, D.A. Willis I didn't. I've lived with uh, bodyguards uh, for four years, and I didn't like it. And I wasn't gonna live with bodyguards for the rest of my life. Ultimately, you, you turned down. Yes. Yeah. I told her. I, I said uh, uh, I'm not interested. So that is the reason why he turned the job down. And Fanny Willis apparently allegedly offered him the job before she offered it to Nathan Wade. As you come on to the page, kindly hit the like bell and don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so as yet. Thank you. Nothing further for this day, Sergeant. Good morning, Governor Barnes. How are you? Just fine. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Um, you said it was sometime in 2021. Do you remember? I think it early? was. I don't remember the dates. They all go. I could look it up on my calendar at the office, but I don't have it. Well, um, I want to ask you about uh, some statements that Ms. Willis made um, March 28th, 2021. Um, she was talking about an, uh, assembling a team for this case. Are you familiar with her work assembling a team for this case? Well, I assume that's what she was talking to me about. Uh, uh, but uh, besides that, I don't know. I know you said you had a meeting with some folks, and Mr. Wade was at that meeting? Correct. Okay. So he was um, with the district attorney interviewing you about taking this case? Well, he, uh, of course, I know Nathan very well, as you do. Yes. Uh, and um, I exchanged pleasantries with him, but the conversation was with Ms. Willis. Okay, with Ms. Willis. Um, were you aware at the time that her team was consisted of Brian Watkins, Megan Vargas, Sonia Allen, Shannon Trotty, Sal Chan, and John Floyd. She had reported that was her team on this case. I know John Floyd was uh, involved, and she probably told me the others, but listen, I barely remember what case I tried last year, much less uh, every word that was said in the conversation. I understand. Fair enough. Um, but she said she was looking to hire more lawyers and investigators to work on this case. She told me, uh, it was to me, and she said, uh, would you be interested in being special prosecutor in this case? And I gave the reply that I've already known. I mean, about hiring other lawyers or whatever, I don't know. I, all I can testify to is what she told me. Um, did she tell you at all why she wanted to hire special counsel and not use someone who was the APA, not have an actual employee? No, she did not. I mean, we did not discuss that, and uh, but I would assume it was because in a case as big as this that she'd have to have a decision. Help. I know John Floyd has been in some cases over the years out in Cobb County, for example, and others. Would you agree that an employee of her office, someone who was paid a state salary or a county salary as an ADA, could handle a case like this? I couldn't tell you that unless I knew the person, knew their experience, and really had been with them in a courtroom. Right. I have an opinion on that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Sit down. Hello, <laughs> oh, Mr. Sit down. It's been a while. It has been a while. I hope you're well. I'm doing fine. Just getting older. With that big song. <laughs> that, that's true. But that applies to all of us, I believe. Um, I think you indicated that if you had your calendar, you'd be able to pinpoint a date for us. I would. Is there a way for you, for example, at a break before you actually leave to contact your folks to see if you can get a date? Um, I guess I could. I, put, I, it, I, I don't know how far back we archive those, but I assume I could. 
Would you be willing to give that a shot for us? I mean, I'll do whatever the court instructs. So if I ask the court and the court says, go ahead and you can do it, that's all right? I'll do whatever the court instructs. I, I hear you. I, uh, and you should, too. <laughs> I, I try to live by those words. I'm not always successful, but I try. Um, if I pinpoint a date, for example, uh, I think the record is clear that uh, Mr. Wade was hired for the position on November 1 of 2021. Does that help you at all? No, it does not. Then let's go to the meeting. It sounds like it was just one meeting. Yes. And could you tell us where that meeting took place? If you it remember? was in the conference room um, adjacent to the district attorney's office. So it was in was it in this or the adjoining building? It was in Lewis Lake. But... And uh, uh, District Attorney Willis was there, obviously, right? Yes. Yeah. And Mr. Wade was there. Best I recall, now I could be mistaken about that. It's like uh, uh, anything that far away, but that's that's my recollection. Do you have a recollection of anyone else being present? Yeah, there were uh, folks, but I don't remember. Do you remember? Were you introduced to Mr. Wade by anything other than you already knew him? Um, was he given no, a title or anything? Know. So, at least as you're there, if I heard you correctly, Miss Willis did all the talking, Mr. Wade did not. I mean, we exchanged pleasantries, but as far as the uh, basis of conversation the reason I'm saying Ms. Willis. So. And would you be able to give us an estimate how long this meeting lasted? Probably, Just rough. Probably an hour. Right. And it, during the meeting, you made it clear, but it was the thanks for the offer, but no thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, I did. Um, as I said, uh, you know, I started off as a prosecutor, and for about 10 or 15 years, uh, I did nothing but crumble. And then but I've tried to move away from it uh, and do primarily civil now. Mr. Gillen and I have done some white collar uh, cases over in federal court. I've got one over there right now, but it's generally business related, you know, where I have a client that's got a kid or him to get indicted. And the case I have over there now is an alleged fraud case. Fair to say that based on your career and the work that you've done, you've handled high-profile cases, correct? I have. Uh, I've, uh, uh, I've, I've handled a pretty good case. I sued Syria one time for beheading a, uh, a client of mine, recovered $80 million. I guess that's the best high-profile, but that was in D.C. I tried that up. And what would be considered complex cases, you've handled those as well, correct? Yes. I mean, we we, uh, we regularly do mass torts, uh, class actions, uh, business uh, business torts, uh, breach of contract, and most of those are high complex, are complex requiring many uh, experts. I, I also, we also do... Uh, Malpractice. I was I did malpractice defense for about 25 years, but since I've returned from the governor's office, I, I try not to represent the insurance company anymore. And uh, I just tried a malpractice case before Judge Edlin in November. And those are complex cases because of the type of uh, you know uh, medical uh, knowledge and that you have to have, and also because of the many experts that you. Thank you. Did Miss Willis, and this is the last question, did Miss Willis tell you why she had sought you, why you had been her choice? No, uh, I, I hadn't, but, you know, uh, I get consulted fairly often on major cases. Would, would you believe, based on circumstances in which you were given the offer, that it had to do with the fact that you had handled complex and high-profile cases in the past? It could have been. Uh, I know her very well. Uh, the, I tried a case against her. Uh, uh, she worked for the JQC, and uh, I represented uh, Judge Rob, Robert Crawford, Matt Crawford, and, uh, I, and she prosecuted him, and I defended him. She beat me at the trial. I turned it around to the Supreme Court. <laughs> so you had some
of experience. Oh, I, I had plenty of experience with it. She's she's a very qualified young. Uh, well, everybody's young to me, but she's a very qualified young. Woman. After that, uh, that one occasion, mm -hmm. did you have any other contact with her in reference to the position itself or who she might be? Consider I, you know, I had some conversations with her or Jeff DeSantis or some of those, uh, but not really an in-depth, uh, you know, about who she should hire. Or anything. Did the name Nathan Wade come up in those conversations no. with her? No. no. Right? No. Um, Nathan was there, I thought. Now, I could be mistaken, but I thought Nathan was there when I... For, for the comments. Nathan was, I, I, I'm, I'm not positive, Nathan was there when I, uh, when I met with him. Right, I, and, and my question was probably poorly, poorly worded, but what I was asking is after the conference, and whatever consulting you might have done, yes. did Miss Willis or Mr. DeSantis bring up the name Nathan Wade as a special prosecutor? I don't think so. Uh, I, I don't recall one. I mean, Nathan is a good organizer. Uh, you know, Nathan can organize stuff. I've watched him over the years. Uh, so I wasn't surprised that he was acting as a special prosecutor. And Mr. DeSantis, for the record, who was that, Jeff DeSantis? Jeff, Jeff DeSantis. Do you know who he is? Oh, yes. Could you tell us who he is for the record? Uh, Jeff works in the DA's office. I knew him when he worked for Thurber Baker. Uh, you know what his, what his role in the DA's office is? I, I have no earthly idea. Is he in media? Does that sound familiar? He has, he has done media in the past. Jeff uh, has generally been, a, I, I like Jeff, and I'm very close to him, but he's generally been on the other side of my campaign. <laughs> All right, so we're talking, the best of your recollection, conference, we don't have the date, I'm asking if you could possibly get it, but the conference you have, Mr. Wade could have been there. Yes, I'm almost sure he was there. And Ms. Willis, obviously, and Mr. DeSantis was there. I think Mr. DeSantis was too. And, and as far as whether there was anyone else there, you I, don't have a present recollection. No. Okay. Next time, next time I'll take a picture, so I'll have an exact. Uh, next time, hopefully, we, you won't have to be here. Well, hopefully not. Thank you, sir. All right, All right Mr. Stockton. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Durham. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Durham. No questions, Your Honor. Mr. McDougal. No questions for the governor. Mr. Rice. No questions. Mr. Gillen. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I couldn't give up the chance getting up here, Governor. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Great. We've done some work in the past together, haven't we? I consider you to be one of my best friends and a crackerjack lawyer. Well, I will say to you uh, on the record that I can understand why they came to see you because you're the finest lawyer that I've ever worked with. Thank you. I need to put you in the next day. Yeah, there you go. We'll get that. But uh, uh, One or two more questions. Uh, okay. You and I working together when it's the appropriate when it's appropriate. Um, there's, you know, we've had no qualms about filing motions to disqualify the DA, have we? No. Matter of fact, you and I successfully disqualified the DA out in Cobb County in the Brown case, didn't we? We did. So whatever needs to be done should you be represent done. Represent your client. You got that. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Couture, are you still with us by Zoom? I am, Your Honor. All right. Any questions? No, sir. All right. And Mr. Cromwell from Slatham? No, no questions. All right. Any redirect, Mr. Abadi? Yeah. Can this witness be excused? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Is there a way that we can ask for that meeting? The, issue, the question is, you want the exact date that the meeting occurred? Yes, sir. And I'm wondering if we can... If it's if it's really material at the exact date rather than just its proximity to the November first hiring, is that fair? If he knows whether it was or earlier in the year versus maybe closer, would that obviate the need for the exact date? If he can't get the exact date, question, okay, let's start there. All right. Uh, so you, I mean, yeah. I think, well, he may take care of it for us. Just if we hold the place I'm here, not, I'm not sure. This. Well, let me try this first, uh, Governor Barnes, before you uh, do a deep dive in the uh, in the email there. Do you recall what time of year it was when this meeting occurred? I'm afraid not. Okay. I, I mean, you know, uh, it, you know how this is. The day, the cases and the days moved together. I had a fellow a few years ago that 
said I represented him in 1978, and I told him I'd take his word for it. testimony at the hearing to disqualify Fannie Willis from the Trump's case. As you leave the page, kindly hit the like bell and don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so as yet. Thank you.